I was there. Can you hear me in the mic? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I was there at one of our theaters in Los Angeles for them to go to the with the whole thing of the film. And we knew as we were watching monitors while she was doing her thing that we had a real hit on our heads. Did any of you see the parody of the Saturday Night Live that commercial on its season over a couple of weeks ago? Uh, first of all, our commercial was better than their parody. <laughs> but what a compliment to AMC that they decided of all the commercials that air all year long in television to do a tribute to how popular that the Nicole Kidman spot is for AMC. So we, we didn't know it was coming, but uh, on balance we were appreciative that we did. So I'm curious, how many of you in the room are Philadelphians, as am I, by the way? Let's go Phillies! Go AMC! <laughs> So if you cut out one reel of the movie tonight, and like the middle of it, just get rid of it, like you can all watch the end of the Phillies game. That's the. So I think you know that I'm a Philadelphian, which makes it particularly enjoyable for me to come back and meet with all of you tonight. Um, I know that this is a movie crazy town because we we sell a lot of movie tickets in Philadelphia. It's also a sports crazy town with the Phillies doing what they're doing and the Eagles doing what they're doing and the Sixers have a good roster. Um, and I don't think the Flyers are doing such a great year, but <laughs> always, bring, always brings the term. Um, what I want to tell you tonight uh, is from the heart. This is the 10th city where I've gone to over the last year, come to the theater, sat down with people who like AMC, watch a movie together, and then talk afterwards outside, as, as you will. For those people who weren't here when I just welcomed you all before the trailer package, I'm going to say, if you want to take, take pictures, sign things, whatever you want. Uh, there are two of you in this room today who were like, you came to see Take the Paradise, you know, like, who's the guy? How come he's in Rome? I don't know the movie. <laughs> For the rest of you, I'm just guessing that you're apes. <laughs> so, uh, so here's what the silverback wants to say, okay? <laughs> Kill the shorts. <laughs> uh, you, that's what you say. It's sort of illegal for me to say it. I can take it. <laughs> um, you say the AMC. It's just that simple. You and a few million of your friends <laughs> say the AMC. Now, uh, for sure, the company's management team has worked very hard under very difficult circumstances. So we like to think that we had a little bit to do with saving AMC too. Because it was our brains and our hard work. But what allowed us to play the game was your enthusiastic support. And, um, you know, we all know we raised two and a quarter billion dollars, two and a quarter billion dollars of equity by selling AMC shares in 2020 and 2021. If we had not been able to do that successfully, we wouldn't be here today. No, we would exist. But we would have gone through a very painful bankruptcy process. And we wouldn't exist in the same form. We wouldn't exist with the same cachet. Uh, and we were only able to raise two and a quarter billion dollars back then because the apes were there to buy the, the shares. And you gave, you gave us a lifeline to work our way through this pandemic, which we are in the process of doing. And I think we're in the process of doing it very well. 
You know that though, there's something that you all did for AMC and you may not even appreciate as much as I do what that was. So you all know that back in March of 2021, I realized that individual investors had taken over the ownership of AMC. And company management's always the box to their shareholders. But companies the size of AMC on the New York Stock Exchange are shareholders for all institutions. And so we bought institutional shareholders through, through these elaborate devices that have been set up over decades. Court hearings calls and investment conferences and through securities analysts. Well, what we had to deal with for the first time the imaginable how do you talk to the, your company's owners about the three or four million of them? And I thought the way you do that is clear. Because we can get our message out quickly, and a lot of you can see it, a lot of you can read it, and comment back. And that's what I wanted to mention in terms of what you did for AMC that you may not realize. Um, I spent about an hour a day reading my Twitter feed. No, it's usually, you know, seven in the morning or 11 at night, midnight or something, so it's not exactly hours that I would take away uh, from anything else. Um, but I learned so much about what was on your mind by reading what you write. And you have no idea how much your enthusiasm rubbed off on us. Your passion for AMC, um, it's, uh, I don't want to use the word infectious, that's a really bad word in America <laughs> these days. I don't want to say it's contagious, that's a really bad word in America these days. I see it, I'll, you can drop it out, trying to say. So I'll just say it's very powerful. Because you share with us your enthusiasm, you share with us your love, you share with us that you didn't want the movie theaters to die. You didn't want the movie industry to die. And you wanted to do all you could, 100 shares at a time, 20 shares at a time, 1,000 shares at a time. You wanted to do all you could, and you were giving us the backbone and the courage to do it on your behalf. And so far, so good. Uh, we have, we're a strong, we're the biggest movie theater chain in the world. We're the strongest position of any movie theater chain in the world. Back in March of 2020, when the uh, coronavirus, COVID-19 forced us to shut theaters, we had a company called Cineworld, big theater chain in Europe, which owns Regal, which is a big theater chain here in the US. Together, Cineworld and Regal, are the second largest movie theater company on the planet, second only to us. Well, we were in the exact same boat they were in in March of 2020. And fast forward two and a half years. We're strong, we're navigating our, our way through this. We have exciting plans of things that we're gonna announce next month, next year. Uh, we're confident in our recovery. By contrast, I think it's six weeks ago, five weeks ago, Cinewell had to file for bankruptcy. Because they were down to $4 million in cash, that's all they had left. And like $4 million for a company their size last year, about a minute and a half. <laughs> and by contrast, we're in a favorable spot. And we're in that favorable spot because the management team at AMC made the right decisions so made the hard choices, took the bold risks, and came up with a really good roll of dice over and over and over again. And I remember telling friends that this is back in 2020 when the theaters are shot and scrambling this rod. And we pulled some rabbits out of the hat to make it through. I said, the only problem is, I need about seven more rabbits. <laughs> and we found them. 
And time after time after time, we made the right choices, we took the right risks, and here we are together, we want us to live together with a bright future. So, uh, my only message tonight is really very simple. Thank you for your support for the past two and a half years. AMC had a glorious first 102 years in our history. We're going to have a glorious 102 next years in our history. And we owe it all this group. And so somebody in the white shirt here is flashing up a sign that says the AMC Ideas Group. This is a group I sent to us by the AMC Ideas Group. Uh, and, um, and we have met a lot of those ideas, too. And some of them were better than others, but, you know, <laughs> we told them pretty good. So um, that's all I want to say. We're here. We're strong. We're going to fight our way through this pandemic. We're, it's not over yet. We're not out of the woods yet. If you look at the box office, for the whole industry, for calendar year 2020,